Broadcasting live from SETI Alpha 6 in the Andromeda Galaxy, this is Mr. C. Well, happy Monday to you, May Stoodall. So, I hope you had a great weekend. I did. Now, I'm taping this actually Sunday um, in the late afternoon. So, um, I'm going to point out something that I was able to experience yesterday. So, um, if you look at this t-shirt, the reason I have a t-shirt on today, it says Prayer March 2020. Yesterday in Washington, D.C., there was a massive prayer conference um, for the country, to pray for the country. Anywhere between 50 and maybe 75,000 people met on the mall in Washington, D.C., and they stopped at seven different pl- seven different places to pray for different things that involve our country, which was really cool. So anyway, I got to take all that in, and there was a second conference going on, prayer conference, called The Return, where tens of thousands of people were on the mall at a different place, and that's not too far from the White House and Congress. So and they were praying as well. That was called the return. So they were praying that America would return back to God. So the idea is that people um, more and more and more would want to know God and follow God. So that's what um, it was about. Really both conferences were praying about the same thing actually and then different aspects of our country. So I challenge you to pray about those things as well. To pray for um, the Senate, our senators, our House of Representatives, that they would seek God for wisdom and want to do what he wants. That our president, the same, that you'd pray for him. Um, Also, that you'd pray for the Supreme Court. So and decisions that are being made about the Supreme Court. And then just for every state, just every state that that just heaps of people would want to know God and want to follow God. So anyway, I'm really challenged. I'm really pumped up about praying about that. I'm going to spend some more time in prayer this evening about all of those things. So anyway, just letting you know, that's why I have this t-shirt on. And I'm, I'm fired up to pray for America so, and for God to bless America. So I won't sing God Bless America right now, but I love that song. So anyway, some reminders for you. So tests and late work, um, tests that need to be um, made up, and then late work that hasn't been turned in, due Friday. The... Late work that hasn't been turned in is going to become a zero after Friday. And the reason is, here's the reason. I've given you a lot of grace. And I think that I have contacted everybody on Teams and let them know that they have this assignment due or that assignment. Get those in. I want you to get partial credit if you haven't turned those in. So get those in. So really important. And then I wanted you to know that we're going to have a test on Friday. And the test is going to be on LS2, Learning Summary 2 through 4. Learning Summary 2 through Learning Summary 4. And on Psalm 139, 13, and 14. One of my favorite psalms. So begin reviewing it again. For you, God, formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. I know it's true. At my core is the idea. So, test Friday. Now, I've got, let me show you this. I've got a freebie list. Here it is. This is my freebie list. And if you were on my freebie list, that meant you 
um, had one or more assignments that hadn't been turned in. So I gave you a freebie on it automatically. I chose, remember I said I was going to do that, I chose what the freebie was going to be used on. You got full credit in RenWeb, in Gradebook. So, and there's not going to be any discussion about that or argument about that. So I chose what assignment and your freebie is now used up. So you don't have a freebie available to use on assignments this week that you haven't turned in. Get her done. Get them done. Get them in. So these are the people that have used up your freebie. Kyrie, Anders, Luke, Caleb, AJ, Harry, Dom, Sophia. Actually, Sophia, no. You have a you have a freebie left. Brandon, you've burned up yours. Parker, no freebie left. Spencer, no freebie left. And Finn, no freebie left. So I put full credit in, not partial credit, um, for you guys. So that's period two. Okay. Now, period four. Sienna, freebie's gone. Michael, freebie's gone. Joel. Freebie's gone. Ethan, no freebie left. Braden, no freebie left. Okay. And then lastly, this would be period five. No freebie left for the following people. So for Dustin, I want to make sure I get these. Robert, no freebie left. Will, no freebie left. Ethan, no freebie. Um, and that's it in period five. If I didn't name you, you still have a freebie left. Okay. So Dustin, Robert, Will, Ethan, that's it. Okay. So there you go. All right. Now, let's see what I've got next. Okay. We are going to do what I think is something really cool. I'm going to tell you about it in just a minute. We are going to do a microscope micro lab. So in the back of the room, um, you've probably noticed I now have eight microscopes. Now, there's a no touch rule on these microscopes. You can't touch them. Don't even think about touching the focusing knobs. If you do, you will mess things up for Mr. Gilbert and for moi. Please don't touch the focusing knobs. They have been pre-focused so that they're focused in place. Now, if while you're doing the microscope micro lab, while you're doing it, and you'll start it today, while you're doing it, if it doesn't look like an object is in focus, here's what I want you to do. Just raise your hand, ask Mr. Gilbert to come over. He'll use the fine focus to get the focus back in place. Please don't touch anything. Now, I have the following, and I'm excited about this, that uh, you get to see these microscopic objects. At Station 1, MS1, I've got a computer chip. So that's pretty cool. MS2, Microscope Station 2, muscle cells. Human muscle cells. At MS3, I have a pair of paramecium. Paramecium are very tiny one-celled critters. They just have one cell, protozoa. And in this case, at number, what was it? Number three? Yep. Yeah. The paramecium that you're going to see are dividing. Now, they're not alive anymore, but they were caught dividing. So here's what they were doing. They were right about this stage. They were about ready to fission or split. So you're going to see them right there. How cool is that to see a pair of paramecium fissioning? It is cool. How many times have you seen it, Mr. C? Uh, tens of times. But every time I see it, I go, that is really cool. At micro scope micro station number four, human red blood cells. Now they're very 
tiny. Please don't touch anything. Look for a little while and then you'll be able to see them. Number five, mixed protozoa, a whole bunch of different kinds of one celled critters. And I have the arrow pointing to amoeba, an amoeba. It looks kind of like a hand. And they're, remember, they're microscopic, so they're incredibly tiny. So, an amoeba. You're going to make a drawing of each one of these in your journal. You're only going to have time to do one today. That's it. So, I would like everybody to get a chance to get at least one. Eventually, we'll get to most of the eight. So, number six, MS6 are plant cells. And I love these. You can see the chlorophyll just popping out. They're so green. Now, I've got the arrow pointing at a little opening. It's like a little long, flat oval that light is streaming up through. Why? Because it's an opening. That's where they breathe. That's called a stomata. They breathe through the stomata. Jesus designed them so through that opening they would take in CO2, carbon dioxide, just the reverse of us and animals. We're O2 in, CO2 out. What are they? CO2 in for green plants and O2 out. The Lord designed them to make oxygen for us and for animals and to keep the supply of oxygen, O2, in our atmosphere. So, hence the just right number of plants all over the earth. Um, MS7 is rope fibers. You're looking at magnified rope fibers. And MS8, you're looking at a little cnidaria, and it's a little creature that has stinging cells. It has tentacles and stinging cells. Now, a big version of this would be like an, no, I said it wrong. A big version of this would be a sea anemone. A sea anemone or a jellyfish. They have tentacles with stinging cells in them. So does the hydra. But the hydra is not going to nail you because it's so small. A jellyfish, on the other hand, eh, different story. Okay. Or a sea anemone with the tentacles that are out. So anyway, those are the microscopic ob uh, objects that you get to watch. Pretty cool. I think you are going to enjoy them. I think. Now, I've got to check out the time. So, and I want to show you the microscope. Now, in your journal, you were supposed to draw a microscope. I'm going to, one more time, go over the parts of a microscope and the procedures of how to use it. And then I'm going to remind you um, about using these correct procedures when you work with the microscopes in the back of the room, when you get rolling in a little bit. Okay. First, this microscope, it's able to magnify because it has convex lenses here. This is the eyepiece. It's where you place your eyelashes. Once you feel your eyelashes on the eyepiece, don't go any closer. Don't go any closer. You could damage your eyeball. I don't want that. I don't want you to scratch your cornea, the outside layer of your eye. And it could happen if you're not careful. If you very forcefully and aggressively move your eyeball in, so when you go to the eyepiece at each microscope, slowly, like this, slowly, slowly move in, slowly, did I mention slowly? And when your eyelash, my, right there, when your eyelashes are touching, that's when you stop, and that's when you look. This will be duh. So close the other eye. If you're looking with your right eye, You've got your right eye and eyelashes on the eyepiece. Close your other eye. Close it. If you're using your left eye, 
Eyelashes touching. Stop, Mr. C. Okay. Close your other eye. Okay. Now, I see an arrow um, when I'm looking at the, um, the visual field that you're looking at. There's a black arrow that's built in, and I'm putting certain things I want you to see at the tip of that arrow. Like, for instance, I'm pointing at the um, two paramecium with the tip of that arrow, the two that are fissioning. So that arrow, <laughs> it's not a mistake. It's built into the microscope, into the field. So anyway, so parts of a microscope, again, make sure they're labeled in your journal. Eyepiece. And there's a convex lens in there. Now, you saw the video on Galileo and where the convex lenses were invented by Hans, I think, Lippershe in Holland. So the other convex lenses are right here in these tubes. These are called objective lenses. Objective lenses these tubes. So convex lens here in the eyepiece and in the objective lenses. Now those two parts. I'm holding the microscope right now by the arm. That would be the arm. So and this is the table that you put microscope slides on. It's called the stage the stage. So you've got eyepiece, objective lenses, arm. I think you have these in your journal, but if you don't, just double checking. Stage right there. And when you put a microscope slide on the stage, here's how you do it. You place the slide gently on the stage. Then you put the clips on to hold it down. So those clips hold the slide in place. Can you see those clips right here? See those? They hold the microscope in place. So the stage. OK. The b -b 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 bottom of the microscope is the b -b 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 base, B-A-S-E, base. Then there is right here, I don't think you can see it, but underneath the stage, there is a, uh, a part called a diaphragm. Starts with D as in delta. The d -d 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 diaphragm is a d -d 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 darkener. How do you spell diaphragm? D I A P H R A G M. Diaphragm. Here it is one more time. D I A P H R A G M. Diaphragm. Okay. And right here is the built in light. Built in light. Right here. So base, built in light, diaphragm, and then two focusing knobs. Can you see those? This is the rough focusing knob. It moves the objective lenses up and down quickly. Rough focusing knob. And then the fine focusing knob. Fine focusing knob right there. The fine focusing knob is to sharpen things up so you can see detail. Fine focusing knob. So those are the parts. One more time, make sure you've got them all. We'll go quickly through them. Eyepiece, convex lens in there. Objective lenses, convex lenses in there. And then arm, stage. And I'll go down to the bottom. B -b -b bottom, base. And then the built-in light. And then the d -d 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 darkener, or AKA diaphragm, and then the 
large knob, the rough focusing knob, and then the fine focusing knob. Now, I'm going to show you something cool about this microscope that I'm going to tell you if I have time. We'll see if I have time. Something about expensive microscopes. These are really good microscopes. They're not cheap. I, these are expensive microscopes, but when I say expensive microscopes, some of the parts are quite a bit more expensive than the ones we have here at school. So I'll tell you what those parts are in just a minute. Now, let's say I've got a microscope slide, so I put it on the stage. Just slide it across so that whatever I want to look at on the slide is right over the opening in the stage that light's going to come up through. Light has to come up through that opening in the stage so it can be magnified by the convex lenses in the objective lens and in the eyepiece. So then you gently put the clips on to hold it in place. And then most microscopes, when they're not in use, they'll have a bag over them. It's called a dust cover so that it keeps dust off of it. So you take the dust cover off and then you turn the light on. So light comes on, light switch. Now you're ready to look. So you don't pick the microscope up. I'm just picking it up because I don't have a flat surface right in front of me. So you've got the light on now. You've got the slide, the microscope slide on the stage. And then you gently move your eyeball in. Now, if the person who used the microscope last did it right, they put it on low power objective. In this case, this is a four power. It magnifies four times the objective lens. So you focus with it. So you're, the eye you're going to use, the other eye closed, and you slowly move up. This one, the stage moves up to the objective lens. Slowly move it up. It's starting to be in focus. There, it's in pretty good focus. With the rough focusing knob, what do I use now? Now I sharpen it up so I can a little bit more with the fine focus. There it's well, back the other way a little bit, back that way. Okay, now it's nice sharp focus with the fine focusing knob. So now something cool about these. We're not going to do this. But if you did, here's what you can do with these scopes. So you can just rotate by putting your index finger and thumb on the outside of the objective and rotate the next power into place, the next power objective. And it makes a snapping sound, a clicking sound. I don't know if you can hear it. Did you hear that? Probably did. Listen. Did you hear it click in place? When you hear that click, it's locked into place. Then you just have to fine focus it to get it sh into sharp focus. Okay. Now, the second objective is a 10x eyepiece. I, I said it incorrectly. A 10x objective and then a 43x objective. Now, the eyepiece on this magnifies 10 times. So you multiply the magnification of the eyepiece times the magnification of the objective. With the, with the first one, it's 4x. So it magnifies 4 times times 10 times 40 power. Wow. Magnification of 40 times. Impressive. And then the next one, 10x and 10x, 100 times larger than it really is. Now, it doesn't really get larger. It just appears to be larger. And then the last one is 43. The last objective, 43 times 10, 430 times magnification. Woo. That's really all we need. Now, if we were working in a university and doing laboratory work or we were in a medical lab looking at cells, we might want a 100x objective. So 100x times 10, what's the total magnification? About a thousand. A thousand times. Okay. 
Now I'm looking at my watch and we're out of time today. Now here's what you're going to do out of time for me to teach you anything else. In just a minute, you're going to work on your homework and here is your homework. Your homework is to read and highlight page 22 to 27. So read and highlight those pages. Now actually read it. I don't want you to scan it. Read it. 22 to 27. Okay, and then you have a worksheet to work on. 27, I think it's 20, what is it? Do I have it here? Yeah. It's 27, I think it's F. 27F, chemical compounds in the cell. Now, this is worth eight points. And here's what you've got to do. On numbers five through 10, if the answer is true, that's all you have to put down, true. If it's false, so here's what you've got to do. You did this before. You've, you put false, but then you look at the underlying word and you've got to put the correct answer in, correct one word or multiple words to make it true. So you got to correct it. Now, if you don't do that, you'll lose points. Probably the most you can get is six out of eight, which would be 75%. So, and you've got to put the page numbers where you found the answer beside each one. Page numbers, and then if it's false, you've got to put the word or words that make it true. Stick them in. Now, were you paying attention? Page number beside each answer from 22 to 27. Actually read and highlight it. And then if it's false, put the word or words in the answer sheet. You write false and then what word or words make it true. Okay. So do a nice job on that. Okay. So um, now here's, here's the way this is going to work. There are eight microscopes available. So Mr. Gilbert is going to um, pick those of you who have number one through eight, and you're going to go back to a microscope. And you're going to turn it on, and you're going to look at it, and you get five minutes. And you're going to make a quick drawing in your journal. Put the number in your journal. Make a drawing of it. And then take your seat and start working on your homework. Reading page 22 to 27, it's on the board. And then do 27F, page numbers and words that make it true if it's false. After the first five, then six through 10, I hope that we'll get everybody back to a scope today, at least to one, to look at one of them. I've labeled what you're looking at. You're not doing the other questions today, just MS 1 through 8. Okay, so Mr. Gilbert will get you back and get you started, numbers 1 through 8. All right, see you tomorrow. Miss you, praying for you, pray for the country. See you tomorrow.